As we begin today, we invite you to please rise. Please rise.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. We welcome you today to this beautiful co-cathedral for this wonderful event today when five young men will be ordained to the priesthood. We welcome their family and friends. We welcome our priests, deacons, all those who have come to make sure that this is truly a diocesan event where we welcome new men into the presbyterate. We come today recognizing our unworthiness for this great sacrament that the Lord has given us. And so as we do with each Eucharist, we call to mind our sins and seek the Lord's forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words, what I have done, what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. 
Lord our God, who in governing your people make use of the ministry of priests, grant a persevering obedience to your will to these deacons of your church, who you will graciously choose today for the office of the priesthood, so that by their ministry and life they may gain glory for you in Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Lecti livre prophète Isaïe, chapitre 61, verset 1 à 3. L'Esprit grand mette la posé sous moi. C'est pour ça que grand mette la sacré, l'y voyez me pour tes bonnes nouvelles là, by Porvio. Pour me penser cœur qui crase yo, pour me prêcher pardon, by prisonnier yo, délivrance, by sac fermé yo, pour me prêcher yon année côté grand mette la fait grâce, yon jour vengeance pour mon Dieu noir pour me consoler tout le monde qui n'a la peine, pour me mettre en couronne en place pour mon sion yo qui n'a la peine yo, l'ocean qui est content en place de yo, manteau l'orange en place l'esprit tristesse là, parole grand maître là. Lectura del libro de los Hechos de los Apóstoles. En aquellos días, hallándose Pablo en Mileto, mandó llamar a los presbíteros de la comunidad cristiana de Éfeso. Cuando se presentaron, les dijo, miren por ustedes mismos y por todo el rebaño del que los constituyó pastores, el Espíritu Santo, 
para apacentar a la iglesia que Dios adquirió con la sangre de su Hijo. Yo sé que después de mi partida se introducirán entre ustedes lobos rapaces que no tendrán piedad del rebaño y sé que de entre ustedes mismos surgirán hombres que predicarán doctrinas perversas y arrastrarán a los fieles detrás de sí. Por eso, estén alerta. Acuérdense que durante tres años, ni de día ni de noche, he dejado de aconsejar con lágrimas en los ojos a cada uno de ustedes. Ahora los encomiendo a Dios y a su palabra salvadora, la cual tiene fuerza para todos los consagrados a Dios. Crezcan en el Espíritu. Dicho esto, se arrodilló para orar con todos ellos. Palabra de Dios. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The Lord Jesus appointed 72 other disciples who sent ahead of him in appearance. And every town and place he intended to visit, he said to them, The harvest is abundant, but the labor are few. Ask to the master of the harvest to send out the labor for his harvest. Go on in your way. Behold, I am sending you like a lambs among the wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into wherever house you enter, first say, peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace rests on him. But if not, he will return to you. Stay in the same house, eat and drink what is offered to you, for the labor deserves payment. 
do not move about from one house to another. And whatever town you enter, and they welcome you, eat what is served before you, cure the sick in it, and say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Joseph Franklin Dutan. John Baptist Kao Chuang Hong. Alessandro Giuseppe Linardi. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these, our brothers, to the responsibility of priesthood. Do you know them to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon recommendation of those responsible, I testify that they have been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose these, our brothers, for the order of the priesthood. My beloved brothers and sisters, because these who are our sons, who are your relatives and friends, are now to be advanced to the order of priests, we must consider carefully the rank in the church to which they are to be raised. It is true that God made his entire people a royal priesthood in Christ. Nevertheless, as a great priest Himself, Jesus chose certain disciples to carry out publicly in his name the ministry we heard of just proclaimed in the gospel today. He sent the disciples on behalf of mankind. The priestly office of the church is critical to the salvation of the world. For Christ was sent by the Father and he in turn sent the apostles into the world and through them and their successors, we the bishops, we continue to exercise the office of Jesus as teacher, priest, and shepherd. After mature deliberation, we know that these brothers now to be ordained to the priesthood are ready, ready to serve Christ, the teacher, the priest, and the shepherd, by whose ministry his body, that is the church, is built and grows into the people of God, a holy temple. And being configured to Christ the high priest, these young men will be joined in the priesthood of the bishops. They will be consecrated as true priests of the New Testament to preach the gospel, to shepherd God's people, to celebrate the sacred liturgy, especially the Lord's sacrifice. So now, my dear sons, you are to be raised to the order of priesthood. 
For your part, you will exercise the sacred duty of teaching and preaching the name of Christ the teacher. You must impart the word of God to all who will hear it with joy. You must meditate on the law of the Lord so that what you believe when you read it and when you teach it, you still believe it and practice what you teach. Today we listen in the first reading to the reading that Jesus chose one Sabbath morning in Nazareth to be on the, the reading on which he was to comment. Today on this Saturday morning, you hear the same reading that Jesus used to proclaim that he was to do the works of the Messiah, that he was to bring about in the world the change because the spirit of the Lord was upon him and he was anointed by that spirit for this special mission. You too today will have the spirit come upon you in this sacrament. You will be anointed for the special work of the priesthood. You too will perform the works of the Messiah through the anointing that you will receive. You must bring glad tidings to the lowly, to the poor, to the downtrodden. You must yourself be happy in your ministry so that you will attract others to Christ so they hear the good news as you evangelize them. You must bring liberty to captives, those who are imprisoned in themselves and their own selfishness, but by your outgoing nature and by the gift of yourselves, you will bring others to Christ. You must release the prisoners, those imprisoned today by the many addictions that our society holds out to them. You must break the bonds that hold them captive by your way of life. You must comfort the more, those who mourn because with the gladness of the message of the gospel, you will bring them to understand the role of suffering in life and the joy that it brings when it is adjoined to that of Christ himself. Yes, you must give a mantle to the weak. You must hold them up. You must protect them through the sacraments of the church, through baptism, through the sacrament of penance, forgiveness of sins, and through the Eucharist itself. Likewise, you must sanctify the people of God by your ministry. The spiritual sacrifice that you offer is for the good of the faithful and for yourselves. In union with the faithful, you will celebrate the sacraments for them. Understand what you do and imitate what you celebrate. As celebrants of the mystery of the Lord's death and resurrection, you must strive to put to death whatever in yourself is sinful. You must walk in a newness of life. Yesterday, in our day of recollection, we celebrated the feast of Saints Peter and Paul. We spoke about Peter and Paul, both of men who had tremendous difficulties. Paul, who persecuted the church. Peter, who denied Christ. And yet these are the men, the pillars of the church, because they changed, they converted themselves to be witnesses to Christ Jesus. So too today, the feast of the martyrs of Rome, witnesses to Christ who gave their life. You too must give your life as witnesses to what you believe. Yes, today, as you came in, you sat with your families. Remember that you are taken from among men and appointed on their behalf for the things that pertain to God. Never forget where you came from. Never forget the families that support you and the larger community of the church that sustains you in your ministry. Today, we must greet those who come from afar, those who come to be the witnesses of this great event. First, I do the most difficult one, and I will go to the easiest one. God help me if you can understand something of what I say in Vietnamese. Chung toi hong wa chao dong wi lin muk wi tu si va bang de den tu moi mien duk na wa ki de chuk mung chung link muk hung kao cha se bak dao tu ta vu ku min Tai Kawi Va Trong Moi Ne Nao Dar 
Se tru vet yam tip tuk suk no kubin. We vung chung trang ne u ja kung ta tong li muk se nuk hoi va gat ti duk yap tam kwa trot dem trok. Hope I said nothing wrong. <laughs> In case you missed something, I welcome the many priests, religious, and friends of Hung Kao who have come from all over the United States to welcome this newly ordained priest as he begins his ministry. Unfortunately, his parents could not come because of the unavailability of visas from Vietnam, but they join us today as we live stream this ordination. Je souhaite le bienvenu à la communauté tienne de la Brooklyn et Queens, et la mère, à la famille de notre bien ami Diac Patrick Dorelius. Il est une bénédiction pour notre déroulé, par par son intelligence et par sa gentillesse. Patrick donne la paresse, bien préparé à donner la sa vie au service des autres. Sa maîtresse exceptionnelle de l'outil informatique et de la te technologie les pré préparé convenablement complète dans le monde d'aujourd'hui pour son futur ministère. O la comunidad de habla español de la diócesis de Brooklyn y Queens recoge a tener los hijos de parientes inmigrantes, os Joseph Dutan de Ecuador y José Díaz de la República Dominicana. Estos dos jóvenes se han presentado para el sacerdocio. Es mi oración que muchos más hijos y hijas nacidos en las Américas de familias emigrantes de habla español se presenten para el sacerdocio a la vida religiosa, ya que nuestra necesidad es grande y los obreros son muy pocos. Y la comunidad de italianos de la diócesis de Brooklyn y Queens, hoy tenemos un nuevo sacerdote que es nato en Germania, pero de inmigrantes italianos por hablar benísimo el italiano, tedesco y español. Es un vero misionario. Gracias a los genitores de Alessandro que son nudos de Italia, e anche ai sacerdoti che sono accompagnati dalla famiglia, oggi abbiamo un grande onore perché il suo spirito missionario è una cosa molto necessaria nella diocesi di Brooklyn. E tu, miei dear sons, Yesterday, we spent the day in prayer together. We recognized the great step you are about to take. You must conform yourself to Christ in all things. You must be good shepherds. You must be united with me and my successors so that faithfully we will bring about in this diocese the kingdom of God that has been apportioned to us. Keep always before your eyes the image of the good shepherd who came not to be served, but to serve, and who came to seek out and to save what was lost.
My dear sons, before you enter the order of a priesthood, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. Do you resolve with the help of the Holy Spirit to discharge without fail the office of priesthood in the presbyteral rank as worthy fellow workers with the order of bishops and caring for the Lord's flock? Do you resolve to exercise the ministry of the word worthily and wisely preaching the gospel and teaching the Catholic faith? Do you resolve to celebrate faithfully and reverently in accord with the church's tradition, the mysteries of Christ, especially the sacrifice of the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation for the glory of God and the sanctification of the Christian people? Do you resolve to implore with God's mercy upon the people entrusted to your care by observing the command to pray without ceasing? Do you resolve to be united more closely every day to Christ the High Priest, who offered himself for us to the Father as a pure sacrifice, and with him to consecrate yourselves to God for the salvation of all? you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to your ordinary and his successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise obedience and respect to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God who has begun the good work in you bring it to fulfillment. My dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, may pour out the gifts of heaven on these, his servants, whom he has chosen for the office of priesthood. Please kneel. Pray for us. 
Hear us, we beseech you, Lord God, and pour out upon these servants of yours the blessing of the Holy Spirit and the grace and the power of priestly grace, that those whom in the sight of your mercy we offer to be consecrated may be surrounded by your rich and unfailing gifts through Christ our Lord.
Draw near, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, author of human dignity. It is you who apportion all graces. Through you, everything progresses. Through you, all things are made to stand firm. To form a priestly people, you appoint ministers of Christ, your Son, by the power of the Holy Spirit, arranging them in different orders. Already in the earlier covenant, offices arose established through mystical rites. When you set Moses and Aaron over your people to govern and sanctify them, you chose men next in rank and dignity to accompany them and assist them in their task. So too in the desert you implanted the spirit of Moses in the hearts of 70 wise men, and with their help you ruled your people with greater ease. So also upon the sons of Aaron you poured out abundant share of the Father's plenty, that the number of priests prescribed by the law might be sufficient for the sacrifices of the tabernacle, which were a mere shadow of the good things to come. But in these last days, Holy Father, you sent your Son into the world, Jesus, who is the apostle and the high priest of our confession. Through the Holy Spirit, he offered himself to you as a spotless victim, and he made his apostles consecrated in the truth, sharers in his mission. And you provided them also with companions to proclaim and carry out the work of salvation throughout the world. And now we beseech you, Lord, in our weakness, to grant us these helpers that we need to exercise the priesthood that comes from the apostles. Grant, we pray, Almighty Father, to these your servants the dignity of, of the priesthood, 
renew deep within them the spirit of holiness. May they henceforth possess this office which comes from you, O God, and is next in rank to the office of bishop. And by the example of their manner of life, may they instill right conduct. May they be worthy co-workers with our order, so that by their preaching and by the grace of the Holy Spirit, the words of the gospel may bear fruit in human hearts and reach even to the ends of the earth. Together with us, may they be faithful stewards of your mysteries, so that your people may be renewed in the waters of rebirth and nourished from your altar, and so that sinners may be reconciled and the sick raised up. May they be joined with us, Lord, in imploring your mercy for the people entrusted to their care and for the whole world. And so that the full number of nations gathered together in Christ be transformed into one people and made perfect in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
Patrick, the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit, guard and preserve you with the power as you sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. Uncal, the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. Alessandro, the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice. Joseph, the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. Jose, the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do 
imitate what you celebrate and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do. Imitate what you celebrate and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do. Imitate what you celebrate and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do. Imitate what you celebrate and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Patrick, how are you? You did it. Okay, Alessandro, Lady Vaughn. Hi, Joseph. Great job. Very good. You graduated from my very end of priest. <laughs>
must have been a lot better than creation in the seven seas. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who have willed that your priest should minister at the holy altar and serve your people, grant by the power of this sacrifice, we pray, that the labors of your servants may constantly please you, and in your church, bear the fruit which lasts forever, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son high priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design were pleased to discern the decree that this one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with your word and to strengthen them with the sacraments. And they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters. They strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and to offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and the saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim.
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her grace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the world, throughout, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, my assistant bishops, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and for all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope and health of well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul and Andrew, James and John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for these your servants, you have pleased to raise to the order of a priesthood, and in your mercy keep us keep safe your gifts in them, so that they may receive by divine commission, they may fulfill by divine assistance through Christ our Lord. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and the blood of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with his eyes raised to heaven, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave it the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. 
be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as one who were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high and in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through the participation at the altar may receive the most holy body and blood of your son and may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
child whose fishes and loaves fed the multitude. In the Lord, the little we have, broken and shared, becomes abundant food.
Let us pray. May the divine sacrifice we have offered and received, O Lord, give new life to your priests and to all your servants that, united in you and unfailing love, they may receive the grace of giving worthy service to your majesty, through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. May the divine sacrifice we have offered and received, O Lord, give new life to your priests and to all your servants, that united in you and unfailing love, they may receive the grace of giving worthy service to your majesty, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. At the beginning of the Mass, I neglected to introduce Archbishop Benedito Ausa, who is the nuncio to the UN. He is here today to honor Patrick Drellius, who worked for him when he was nuncio in Haiti. Thank you. Today we have reversed the order a bit, so we will call the pastor to whom they will be assigned, and then they can guess who it is that is going to be their pastor. But first we have Father Kevin McBrien. Is he someplace here? He's coming. You're taking his place, the associate, Father Canna. Okay. And who's going there? Oh, Hung Kao. <laughs> very good. Okay, very good. <laughs> okay. Father William Hoppy. Okay. And that's Jose Diaz. <laughs> We're gonna get far in life. They'll love it. They'll love you there. <laughs> Father Jorge Ortiz. And we have Joseph Dutan. <laughs> You get this one, he gets that one. In the middle. They're about the same size, good. <laughs> Monsignor Cas David Casado, I'm not sure he's here. Ah, there's somebody taking his place. Father, ba he's here. And that is Alessandro. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And as you know, Father, uh, Father uh, Patrick is going back to Rome to complete his studies, but he has a summer assignment with Father Hilaire Belazaire at Sacred Heart Church. Okay. And then you get that one. You get this one. Okay. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> we like to put them to work immediately. Thank you again for your presence today. As you see, this is one of the greatest days that we have in our diocese when new life comes to the presbyterate, where these young men dedicate themselves to the service of God in this church, in this diocese. So we are so thankful today to all who are present. Please, Salve Regina. The Salve Regina. Please stand. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulcedo, Espes Nostra Salve, A Te you. May God, the um, who founded the church and guides her, still protect you constantly with his grace, that you may faithfully discharge the duties of the priesthood. Amen. May he make you servants and witnesses to the world, to divine charity, the truth, and faithful ministers of reconciliation. And may he make you true shepherds to provide the living bread and the word of life to the faithful, that they may continue to grow in the unity of the body of Christ. Amen. May I ask my brother bishops to join me in the final blessing. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you now and forever. Amen. Thanks be to God. Please be seated.
hide the newly ordained. This should be out a little bit more. <laughs>